Welcome to a little bit of Lab Rat Fun Networking with Fish. This is going to be a little YouTube, uh, part of a larger one, which is just getting the OSPF up and running between Router 1 and the Spiron Test Center. We're going to do two different cases, so but we're only going to focus on between Router 1 and the Spiron Test Center. In another YouTube, we'll do the BGP and then we'll also do traffic. But for this one, we're just going to focus on between Router 1 and the Spiron Test Center. STC. There are two examples that I'm going to give. One, we had left our environment with VLAN 11 already up and running uh, with a host over there on 10.1.11.101 on the Spiron Test Center side. So one example, so the first example is going to be taking that already existing device host on the Spiron Test Center and then adding OSPF to it and then generating prefixes from that. The second example will be to uh, actually go knowing that you're going to create a device, a host, whatever, and you know you're going to create it and when you're actually creating it you also know it's going to be doing OSPF and it's also going to be advertising prefixes. So that will be example number two. So for example number one, let's go ahead and do that one first. So for example number one, it is OSPF. Example number one is adding OSPF to an existing host. So last we left our environment, again, I already had VLAN 11 up and running with that host 10.1.11.101 over on the Spirant Test Center side. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Spirant Test Center and we're going to enable OSPF to run on that existing device. Then we're going to verify that the OSPF relationship is established and then we're going to advertise 10 prefixes. Um, on that to advertise that from the Spiron Test Center to Router 1 and then we're going to verify that the prefixes are being received over on Router 1. So first and foremost we're going to go to the Spiron Test Center and enable OSPF to run on the device. So going back to the Spiron Test Center, here we are on port 1, 1 which is on Router 1 which is on Router 1's gigabit um, 121 interface. It's nice because the uh, more recent Spiron Test Center codes will tell you that. We have two hosts on here. Last we left this, we're going to be doing this on the IPv4. So if you notice these are the tabs above, so this is my emulated tab. Um, I already have an OSPF tab, but if you don't have an OSPF tab, um, it just means that you didn't click it up here. So here's OSPF. We click it, the tab shows up. We go over to OSPF. When we go over to OSPF, here's our IPv4 host. We're going to go ahead and make it active. And by the way, um, as some of you all know, I like to have my columns a certain way that is the way that I use it in proof of concepts. And so I've already tweaked these. So if my columns look different than yours, you can drag and drop them or you can come here and do a customized view and set them up the way that you want. So I'm going to say active. The default is that it's area um, zero. The network type is actually going to be default to native, but I had already changed it to broadcast. And the reason why I had already changed it to broadcast was because I already made sure all this worked before I brought you in. So uh, when you bring it up, it's probably going to be native. And so um, I'm making it broadcast because that is what my default is going to be over on my side. Um, if you were doing authentication, you could change that here, graceful restart, router priority, everything else under the sun over to the right. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do this real quick, lots to see. Um, but typically the majority of the time when people are coming to a proof of concept, what they're doing and um, is they're just going ahead and they want to have a OSPF neighbor up. They want to have a whole bunch of LSAs, maybe send them out, maybe they want to flap routes, uh, maybe they just want to make sure that Ether Channel still works and this and this works while it has a hundred prefixes in it or a thousand prefixes in it, something like that. So typically it is just one OSPF neighbor and then sending a bunch of prefixes 95% of the time. So from our perspective, that's it. That's all we have to do. And so what we're supposed to do is coming back over here is we're supposed to enable OSPF and we're supposed to verify the OSPF neighbor relationship established. So let's go ahead and get it going. So we have a couple choices here. I can right click 
and I can say start uh, this device or I can uh, highlight this and then start the device up here or I can hit the big green button in the sky. Now the other thing that you'll notice again is whenever I see the green apply button I'll always click it. That means that there is some type of small um, could be nothing, it could just be a name or a larger difference between the configurations that I have on this PC and in this GUI and the instruction set that is out on the uh, Spiron Test Center appliance. So it's gone and we're going to go ahead and we're just going to highlight this and then click start. Now it's going to go to DR Other, Adjacency State is now full, boom, done. So if we come back over here, we're supposed to go ahead and now verify that the OSPF neighbor relationship is established. But let's go ahead and see what router one thinks. So if we do a show IP OSPF interface brief, we'll see that we have OSPF on uh, VLAN 11, which is right here, area zero, and I do have one neighbor. So if we go ahead and we um, ask what neighbors, then there we are. So we have a neighbor and it's full and DR other. Our neighbor ID is 192001, which will be the default for the Spiron Test Center. You can tweak this as well. So good, good to go. So the OSPF neighbor relationship is established. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go back to the Spiron Test Center and we're going to advertise 10 prefixes starting with 10.11.1. And so we'll go ahead and go back to the Spirant Test Center. And so now what we can do is we can do a LSA generator. So let's go to the LSA generator. We're going to go ahead and click this one and click next. This is the default that you're going to see. In almost 19 years of doing proof of concepts, I have never used anything but none as the topology type. So this is a lot more convoluted than you're typically going to need in a POC. Typically for most of the POCs that come through, it's just going to be, you want to pretend that there's a router there, you want to neighbor up at this one OSPF neighbor, and you want to send routes. So um, the, the address I want is 10. Dot, what did I say? 10.11.1.0. Um, so this is the starting prefix, and you have a lot of other choices here. I've actually never clicked any of these either. Um, again, it's typically just bring up the OSPF neighbor, bring up prefixes. So I can have stub networks, not going to do stub networks, but you could actually have the number that you want here. Um, I can do summary routes. We're going to go ahead and do 100 summary routes. Nope, we're going to do 10 summary routes. This is how many you want to have duplicated and it will go ahead and start at the starting IP prefix that you did on the other one. You can override it. And this is the prefix length. You can do fixed. You can also kind of sort of do like a custom one or whatever. For us, typically the customer is just asking, let me just see this. I don't want any externals. And so we're just gonna go ahead and confirm that this is what we have. And we wanna go ahead and we wanna have 10 summaries. And so close. And we're going to go ahead and click apply. And as soon as we click apply, it's going to go ahead and it's going to let us know. Now, if we want to edit the LSAs, just to let you know, let's say that you want to have a hundred of them instead of a thousand. Um, here's your router LSA, your network LSAs, your summary LSAs. So ASBR, so you can edit all of these things. Close. So let's go ahead and go over to router one. And let's do a show IP route. And here we are, we have 10.11.1 uh, through 10.11.10. .10. So if we do a show IP route summary, we see that we have um, OSPF, we have 11 subnets. I'm also learning a subnet from uh, router two as well. So that's it, that's what you do when you just wanna go ahead and you want to add OSPF to something existing. The other one is, so we did all this. The other one is to create something brand new. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that as well. There's gonna be a lot of overlap. So we're gonna go to the Spirant Test Center. We're gonna create a new device. We're also gonna say that that device is gonna be on VLAN 12. While we're configuring that new device, we're gonna configure it to do OSPF. 
while we're configuring it to do OSPF, we're also going to go ahead and generate LSAs. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come over here to Devices, because I'm doing it on Inspire and Test Center port 1.1, which is this one. Now remember, uh, so by default, actually, this probably would have been none or whatever you did last. So this is protocol technologies, access, whatever. I want to do routing. So I want to do routing, and so I want to, so I'm going to configure the device. I'm going to add a device. I'm also going to go ahead and enable OSPF, and I'm going to enable generating routes. So we're going to go ahead and do a next. So IPv4, number of headers, because I'm going to be doing VLAN 12. That might not be already there. So um, uh, from before it was VLAN 11. So this time we're going to go ahead and we're going to do VLAN 12. So it's going to be 10.1.12.101. And then we have that. And we have next and area zero broadcast next and finish and do you want to delete the existing devices no I don't and then we're gonna get a pop-up again like you just saw this is the OSPF version 2 LSA generator so we know we're gonna be doing this we're gonna be doing it on this device it'll already be clicked so we go ahead and click and it's going to remember that we said none again I've always said none that's the biggest thing that I'm even doing this YouTube for um, now for this one, it's supposed to be 10.12, and uh, I'm still going to do 10 of them, but it's going to be 10.12, next, and finish. And now we're going to go ahead and click apply again, and we're going to go ahead and come down here, and we're going to start the device. Now what I have done actually and intentionally is what a lot of times when you create new devices people start troubleshooting the OSPF or they might start doing a sniffer trace here as well realistically what's going to happen is do I even have VLAN 12 on that physical interface no I don't I had VLAN 11 I also don't have an SVI and I don't have OSPF on it on the other side so hold that thought I'm going to go to router 1 and I'm going to configure VLAN 12, going to put it in router OSPF, and then we'll come back up and see this work. And we're back, and we have the new device on VLAN 12 up and running. Now let's find out whether or not we actually have those subnets over there as well. Now remember we had 10.11 coming from the OSPF neighbor that's on VLAN 11 and 10.12 coming from the OSPF neighbor that's on VLAN 12. And so now if we do a show IP route summary, we should actually have 21, 10 prefixes from the VLAN 11 one and 10 prefixes from the VLAN 12 one. Most important thing that I want you to know from Aspire and Pest Test Center perspective is click none. That is what we always do, what I always do in the proof of concepts. Click none, one router. I tend to do summaries unless the customer wants to see something specific. And that's it. The OSPF is up and running. On to the next YouTube.